Welcome back to my channel. I want to thank my brothers and my sisters who have taken time out of their busy schedule to watch our videos and subscribe to our channel. Perhaps if you haven't subscribed yet, please encourage us by doing so. You can also honor us by liking, sharing, and commenting on our videos because together we'll work with our leader Mazin Namdekano, IPOB, and Eastern Security Network to make our Biafran dream a reality. My brothers and my sisters, the Fulani terrorist Meeti Yala are deploying 5,000 Fulani jihadist terrorists into Biafra land because the Nigerian military were unable to match the exploits of Eastern Security Network. And this terror group thought by now that there would have been another Python dance in Biafra land. But the fear of ESN, Eastern Security Network, did not make that happen. You know? So the Fulani Meiti Allah, out of frustration and desperation, wants to flood the Biafran land with 5,000 Fulani terrorist jihadis. They want to use the cover of a Bubagu being formed by the Southeast governor. You know, they will now use it and bring in their men, the jihadists, into Biafran land. You see why we need not to support our governors? Because the Fulanis are using them. You know, this plan has failed on arrival because IPOB have told the Fulani Meyetiala terrorist group that any terrorist Fulani headers found in Biafran bushes or forests will be killed and very soon Eastern Security Network will invade the northern states because we Biafrans will no longer tolerate provocative utterances from the Fulani terrorists, as the Nigerian government is doing nothing to curb their excesses, killings, kidnapping, and maiming. The federal government of Nigeria are the sponsors of Fulani Meetiala, and they have sponsored the Fulani Meetiala terror group to make provocative utterances. IPOB warned the Fulani Meeti Allah that they should stop provoking IPOB and Eastern Security Network or else a drastic action will be taken against this terrorist group, Meeti Allah and their headers. They made the Fulani understand that Biafra land is not easy to penetrate as they penetrated the Hausa land and conquered it in 1804. Fulani Meyetiala and their Fulani presidency sponsors can intimidate the Afran governors and traditional leadership, but they cannot intimidate Mazen Namdekanu led IPOB and Eastern Security Network because the IPOB and Eastern Security Network personnel are disciplined and men of integrity. They are men of their word and they are men guided by the principles of God. And because God has ordained them to bring freedom upon the land of Biafra. IPOB also declared an end to open grazing in any part of Biafra land. They warned that if they find any cow grazing openly on Biafran's farms again, both the cow and the herders shall not live to tell their experience. A word is enough for the wise. My brothers and my sisters, this is why we need to support Mazin and the Kano IPOB and Eastern Security Network because they are the reason why the Fulani terrorists haven't overrun Biafra land. You know, uh, the unknown angels took their gospel to the Zone 13 police headquarters in Nepal and Amra State. 
and the police headquarters, some of their patrol vehicles, and some of their men were set ablaze. As if that wasn't enough, they took their gospel to Bende local government area, and the Uzwa Kali police station was set on fire. This is God fighting back for his oppressed Biafran children. The Fulani Nigerian government, in collaboration with the Southeast leaders, are using the Department of State Security Services to adopt innocent Biafrans. And they wix them away, and if they can't get them arrested, they get their wives arrested. And they think that God won't fight back. They lie. Because God never sleeps nor slumber. You know, our leader, Mazin Namdekano, IPOB and Eastern Security Network, have severally told the world that they don't know or have any link with the unknown angels. Because the unknown government are sent by God to help his people. But the Nigerian Inspector General of Police will now rush and blame IPOB and Eastern Security Network without a single form of investigation. Meanwhile, Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa terrorists are busy running down Nigerian military bases. Yet, the Fulani Nigerian government won't do anything to the real terrorists. The Fulani Nigerian government have purchased a lot of ammunition to fight Biafra and the Yoruba nation, you know, which their compromised media terms as secession groups instead of freedom fighters. Ordinarily, those ammunitions were purchased for the insurgent fight in the northern Nigeria, but they won't use them to fight Boko Haram or ISWEP terrorists, but they, were, they are keeping them for the war against Biafra and Yoruba nation. According to their, according to their Nigerian Minister of Information, Alaji Elai Mohammed, who said that the secessionists will be the first one that will run first when the war against Biafrans and Yoruba nation will start. So you see, they deceive the whole world that they are buying ammunition to fight Boko Haram and the Islamic states. But whereas they are not using those ammunition to fight the insurgent war, they are keeping them to fight Biafrans and Yoruba nations. Isn't that enough reason to show that Nigerian government is a sponsor of terrorism in Nigeria? The late Buhari, not the imposter Jubrin from Sudan, who ran away in Cuba after rigging him in, in 2019, or the current imposter Yusuf Abubakar Umar from Niger Republic, who is Aisha Buhari's boyfriend. But the late Buhari came to rule Nigeria with the mindset to accomplish the Fulanization and Islamization agendas. That was why he kept weeping each time he lost election in the past. But faith smiled on him. Because the Fulanese were able to deceive the likes of Tunubu, Okorocha, Amechi, and Ko. That Buhari was a Democrat and wanted to rule for only one term. And they all fell for that cheap Fulani deception. The one term ended in 2019, but the Fulani Janjaweed jettisoned that agreement with those foolish Southern politicians because both the Fulanese and the Southern politicians all lack integrity.
They are not men of their word. They don't keep their promises. The Fulani Janjaweed, you know, were unable to accomplish their agendas in 2019. They then resorted to shifting the goalposts to 2023. And they have been able to keep the stupid and greedy Southern politicians busy fooling themselves on their 2023 fantasy. Why the Fulani Janjaweed are busy solidifying powers to rule Nigeria forever. And also, they keep of they keep taking over other tribes' ancestral land to settle their foreign Fulani brothers. You see, there's nothing like one Nigeria. The Fulanis are just fooling the Biafran politicians. They are fooling our governors, fooling our traditional rulers, fooling the southern politicians. While all of them keep their eyes on 2023, the Fulani is busy solidifying power, taking over everything. You know, they have done a lot of crimes. They have done a lot of nepotic appointments in order to solidify their powers. That was the same excuse. The Fulani politicians, even the one in the same political party with former president, good luck Jonathan, they gave a reason that they worked against Jonathan's second term election because Jonathan promised to rule for one term only. But the library gave the same promise, yet they re-elected him for second term. But this time, it was an impostor that was in charge. The Fulani Caliphate have committed so much atrocities that they are afraid of relinquishing power to the south, even to the astute in Biafra land or Yoruba nation. They are afraid because they are afraid that they might get uh, a retaliation from the southerners. So that is why they are afraid. So they believe that if they keep deceiving the south and taking over the ancestral land, they will be able to solidify the requirements in the flawed Fulani 1999 Nigerian constitution, where they need 25% of vote from each state. You know? So, you know, by the time they flood the southern states with their Fulani Janja weeds, you know, they will be able to have the 25% and they will not need the support of Biafrans or Yoruba nations to win elections in Nigeria. And that's the plan of the Fulanis. You know, the writing is on the wall. And I don't understand why Biafrans and Yorubas, who claim to be so educated that they can't even see the deception of the Fulani Janjaweed. The former Nigerian military president, Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida confessed that he annulled the June 12 election of MKO Abiola because the Fulani Caliphate and their military forced him to do so, else he would have been a dead man. They vowed never to allow a satana be their commander in chief. Jonathan's case was by chance. And the Fulanese have learned their lessons, and they have vowed never to allow that happen again. And that is why they are running, you know, through impostors. They are running the country through impostors until their agendas are fully accomplished, where they do not need the Satanist support to win elections. They know that Biafra will resist. So they have topied ammunitions to fight Biafrans, even though they lack the military manpower and skills, and they have never won a war before. The Fulani Janjaweed, apart from stockpiling ammunitions, they have also stolen the country dry to fund their agendas. No wonder revenue 
generating government outfits like NMPC, FIRS, Customs, the MPA, etc., no longer remit more than half of their revenues to the Federation account, but they remit it into the pockets of Fulani Janjaweeds. The Fulani Janjaweed thinks that they can forcefully keep Nigeria as one. That won't happen because they have pushed Biafrans and other non-Fulani tribes to the wall and they have made up their minds to fight back for their freedom from the Janjaweed Fulanese. Thank you my brothers and my sisters for watching my video. Please watch out for the next and bye bye.